Today we're going to talk about some large and some small but interesting changes they have made to Dragon's Dogma 2 from the original one. Let's get to it. So there are a lot of improvements to systems and changes to systems that have been made in Dragon's Dogma 2 from the original Dragon's Dogma and Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. And there have been a lot of obvious ones that have been pointed out time and time again like the additional new classes and stuff like that but I wanted to point out some of them in this video that haven't been talked about as much. The first of those being camping. Camping was kind of a thing in the original. There were a few rest spots that you could stop at, but in Dragon's Dogma 2, it appears there are going to be lots of little places all over the map, little campfire areas that are kind of doused fires. You'll be able to tell because they're, as you can see, surrounded by rocks and it looks like there was a campsite here. Well, if you have an actual camping kit on your party, you can use these sites to camp at and rest at. Camping at these sites will allow you to do the usual that you would expect when resting at a town, at an inn, or what have you, where you refill your health to max and your stamina, and all the same stuff that you can do at an inn, like changing out skills, for example. But another new feature that I want to talk about that comes along with camping is cooking. So in the first Dragon's Dogma, there were tons of different types of food, but you just ate those foods and they would give you back health and stamina or what have you. In Dragon's Dogma 2, it appears there is a full-on cooking system allowing you to make cooked foods that then give you additional buffs. The foods still contain the health benefits, but also, as you can see from the image on the screen, contain other bonuses as well, like boosting your strength, defense, and stamina. So I have a feeling that you're going to want to ensure that you keep cooked foods on you and eat them often, not just to refill your health, but to also get the benefits to defense, health, and stamina, as these are all core traits traits that are going to help you in battles. Another change that I noticed that I feel like skipped by many people, and this was from some of the gameplay that the developers showed on the official Dragon's Dogma YouTube, is a very small change with an absolutely massive impact to gameplay, and that is picking one of your downed pawns up off the ground now takes about two seconds to complete. So in the original, you just run up to them and you hit your activation key, whatever it is for me, I rebound that key. So I think in normally it's E for me, it was F. If you're on mouse and keyboard, you just run up to them, you tap it real quick and they instantly get up and they're back into the fight. Now you actually have to hold down that key for a period of time. Like I said, from the footage, it appears to be about two seconds long and then the pawn gets back up. The pawn also regains health based on whatever the Arisen's current health is. In the original, the whole pawns getting down thing and picking them back up was somewhat exploitable because you could do it instantly before any of the AI had a chance to really attack you because it was pretty much instant. You just run up to them, real quickly hit the activation button and they're up and back into the fight. Now that you have to actually stop and hold down the button, I have a feeling that it is going to be a lot more detrimental to a fight when a pawn actually goes down. Let me know what you all think about this change down there in the comments. Do you think this is a good change? Do you think it's a bad change? Do you think it's going to have much effect on your overall gameplay? The next big change that I noticed that I don't see being talked about very much is in the original to unlock the vocations, you just unlocked all of them after I think it was level 10 or so. They just all become unlocked and you can go change to any vocation at any given point of time after you unlocked all of them. In Dragon Dragon's Dogma 2, it looks like you will actually have to quest and earn favor with maesters in order to unlock those additional vocations. So you will start with only four, but there are a total of 10. And to get to those other 10, they're going to make you work for them. So it's not going to be a situation of where five minutes into the game, 10 minutes into the game, whatever, you just go talk to a single person and you instantly have all of the vocations accessible to you. I think this is an interesting change. I kind of like this change because it kind of makes things feel a little more alive and like you're going on your journey a little more or the gameplay just feel like more of a journey than it did in the original one where it's just like, bam, there you go, pick and choose and have fun. Now it's like,
like, okay, you start out with your basic knowledge and you have to really earn somebody who has more knowledge than you. You have to earn their trust and then they'll teach you how to do these other things. And I think overall it's going to feel a lot better and add to the playability a little bit more of the game and kind of extend the gameplay a bit so you feel more like you got your money's worth because let's be honest, it's a pretty pricey game. So making sure that there are things like this that aren't too grindy but feel rewarding are really good for making it feel like you got your money's worth out of a game. So the last thing I want to talk about is fast travel. It looks like the game still has the original mechanic of the fairy stones and the port crystals. So I'm assuming you'll still be able to find the port crystals, slam them into the ground, use the fairy stones to travel wherever and use the fairy stones to travel to towns. However, they have added a new fast travel mechanic, which is the ox carts. So they say on their official website that the ox carts will be able to be found along roads and in towns and you can fall asleep on the back of them to wake up in your next destination. Now it does cost a little bit of money to use the ox carts. So it's about $200 or 200 gold compared to the 10,000 gold that it costs to buy a fairy stone, which is a single use item. So if you're strapped for cash and don't have enough money to buy a fairy stone, the ox carts could be a solid option for fast travel to get to whatever destination you're trying to get to. I think this is an interesting system and I like it because it feels more cohesive and more grounded. I get that this is high fantasy so they can do whatever they want to do, portals, crystals, teleportation however they want to do it and it's fine in a high fantasy setting but I like the idea of just like being somewhat poor and hopping on the back of an ox cart and falling asleep and next thing you know you're at your next location kind of like taking a train in the real world. I think it's an interesting way to do fast travel and it's nice to have cheaper options to get around instead of using the rather expensive fairy stones. So that's pretty much it. These are just a few things that I have noticed that are different. Wanted to point them out and talk about them. See what you all thought about them. Do you like these changes? Do you think they're going to be good or a detriment to the game? And how excited are you for Dragon's Dogma 2? Let me know down there in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and you're interested to see more Dragon's Dogma content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload more in the future. And if you're looking for some more of my content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.